Hi everyone, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase around open cloud innovations. This is season two, episode one of the ongoing series covering exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem, We're talking about open source and innovation. I'm John Furrier, your host. Today we're joined by two great guests, Dan Garfield, Chief Open Source Officer and Co-Founder of, of Codefresh IO and Rizil Tabib, CEO and Co-Founder. Two co-founders in the middle of all the innovation. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. So you guys have a great platform and you know, as with cloud native goes mainstream in the enterprise and for developers, the big topic is unification, end to end, horizontally scalable, leveraging data, all these things around agile that I call agile cloud next level. This is kind of what we're seeing. The CNCF is growing, you're seeing KubeCon every year is more about these kinds of things. You know, words like orchestration, Kubernetes, container, security, all those complexities are now at the center of making things easier for developers. This is a key um, uh, value proposition and you guys at CodeFresh are offering a, really the first enterprise delivery solution uh, powered by Argo, which is an open source project. Again, open source driving really big changes. So let's get into it. Uh, and first of all, congratulations and thanks for <laughs> working on this project. What's so special about that. Argo, the project and why have you guys decided to build a platform on it and where, where is this coming together? Take us through why this is so important. I think, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take the, um, here. I think Argo has been a very fast growing open source project for multiple reasons. A, it has been built for the new way of building and deploying application. It's cloud native, you know, you mentioned Kubernetes becoming kind of the de facto way of running application. It's the de facto way to run, uh, to run automation and pipeline. But also Argo has been built from the ground up to the latest practices of how we deploy software. We deploy software now differently. We deploy it using GitOps. Uh, practice, we're deploying it using Canary, Blue, Green, progressive deployment. And Argo has been built around these practices, around these technologies, and has been very much, you know, widely adopted by the community. In the past, uh, KubeCon that, you know, you've mentioned, Argo was all over the place, and we were very glad to be working with the community to talk about, you know, what the next steps with Argo. Yeah, it's a really good point. I would like to just follow up on that because you know you see this being talked about. It always comes up. Where does open source really, outside of uh, pure contributors, matter? And you know, when you have corporations contributing, you're seeing this has been the trend. You saw it with Lyft, with Envoy, companies doing more and more open source. This is part of a big collaboration. And this again, this comes back down to this whole, you know, why it's relevant and why it's so special with Argo. Um, continue to talk about that relationship because it's not just you guys. It's now community. Yeah, I can I can speak to that. The uh, the Argo project is something that we maintain in partnership with several of the companies, and really our relationship with it is that this is something that we're actively contributing to. This is something that we're helping build the roadmap on and planning the events around and all those kinds of things. Uh, and we're doing that because we really believe in this technology, and we've built our platform on it. So when you deploy CodeFresh, you're deploying technology that's built directly on Argo and is designed specifically to solve that problem you spoke to at the top of the hour. We all want to deliver software faster. We all want to have fewer regressions. We want to have fewer breaking changes and we want software to be super reliable. We want to be confident about what we're doing. That's really why we picked Argo because that technology that we have, it is to Raziel's point, delivered in this new way. It's delivered using GitOps and that's a whole revolution and change in the way that people build and deploy software and bringing cohesion into that experience is so critical to building the confidence that lets you actually deploy often and frequently and more. Yeah, Dan, if you don't mind just expanding on that one point about the problem you solve, because to me, this has been kind of that evolution. It's, it's almost like, yeah, there's been problems, plural and opportunities that you saw with those in growing markets like this with DevOps and DevSecOps and now cloud native. What, what is the catalyst behind all this? What was the, what was the um, epiphany behind it? How did it get so much momentum? What was it really doing under the covers? <laughs> well, it's, it's a very simple and easy to use set of tools. And that's, that's one of the big things is that if you look at the ideas of GitOps, and there's actually a foundation around this that we're, we're part of called uh, Open GitOps, the GitOps Working Group under the CNCF. And those principles of I want to yes do my 
software defined as code. I want to do my infrastructure defined as code. And I need something monitoring my production run times and making sure that the declared desired state is always matching the actual state. Those principles have actually been around for a number of years. And with Kubernetes, we really unlocked an API that allowed us to start doing GitOps. And this is why we bring in Argo and you see the rise of Argo CD and Argo workflows and what we've been doing is really because that, that technology has been unlocked now. So uh, the ability to define how your software is supposed to run and now your entire software delivery stack should run all defined and then monitored and then kept in check using a GitOps operator. That, that critical unlock is what's really driving the massive adoption. And like Raziel said, Argo is the fastest growing and most popular open source project for delivering software. Uh, and it's not even close. Yeah, this and is really this is a really great point. And, and I want to get into that because I want to know why you what you guys do on your platform versus the open source and get that that relationship uh, settled. Before we get there though, I want to get your reaction to some of the commentary in the industry because Git, GitOps trend has been exploding into new directions. I mean, it used to be a term about 10 years ago called big data, right? In the beginning where data was, oh, big data. Now, you, now and which yeah. spawned a huge DevOps revolution around data as well. But now you're hearing people talk about big code Right, like, I mean, the code bases are becoming so huge. So as a developer, you know, you're lever leveraging large open source um, code. This idea of the software delivery with existing code and new code just adds to more code. There's more code being developed every day. There, there is more code delivered every day. And I think that organization realize today, almost in every industry that they, they have to pace up um, how fast and how frequent they update their software delivery. You know, we're living in a world in which every aspect of our life is being disrupted by software and organization realize that they have to keep up and figure, figure out how to deploy software more frequent and more reliably. And I think, you know, you mentioned that really Kubernetes with cloud native became the de facto way of running application. I think most of organizations have made that decision to move into cloud native. The second, the second question is after is, okay, now we have all the application running, how fast and how more frequent we can deploy application to the cloud native. And that's the stage in which, you know, we're super excited about our going on platform because that basically streamline the building application for this cloud native, deploying application for the cloud native and so on. Yeah, and I think that highlights the business value. You get in a lot of the conversations with um, uh, businesses that say they want the modern application on the cloud scale. And it all, yeah. at the end of the day, it comes down to speed and security, right? So, you know, sure. uh, how fast sure. can I get the app yeah. out? How well does it work? Does it run performant yeah. and does it have security? And, and I don't want to slow exactly. that down. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and that's simple, kind of oversimplifies it, but that's kind of the net net, right? So, so when you look at o Argo open source, what that's done and kind of where you guys are taking it, can you talk about the differences between your enterprise version and the open source version and the interplay there, the relationship, the business model, how customers can play on both sides or, or, or understand the difference? Sure, so, yeah, so go ahead. Oh, go go ahead. Ahead. Okay, so I think, you know, Argo, as you mentioned, is it's probably the most advanced technology um, today to both you run pipelines, there are like um, events to trigger pipelines and Argo workflow to run the pipelines, Argo CD for GitOps and rollout for Canary Blueberry strategies. And, and the adoption is really exploding. You know, just as an anecdote we had in December, um, we have worked with the community and organized ArgoCon event, uh, when, in which we had initially, you know, kind of thought about, you know, 500 attendees and so on. We have more than 4,000 registrants and, you know, majority of them are coming from enterprise. Now, as we have talked to the community um, during this conference and figure out, okay, so what are the things that, that you're still missing and, and that will help you take the benefit that you get from Argo to the next level? There are a few things that came up, you know, one is, Algo is a great technology. However, Algo now is fragmented into um, four projects. There is an events, there is workflow, there is Algo CD, and there is uh, um, Argo rollout. And there is a need to bring them all together into a solid platform with you know solid you know one runtime that can be easily installed. Um, monitor all of this um, in a single UI, in a single control plane. That's one aspect. The second is the scalability really being able to manage it centrally across multiple clusters, not in one cluster. And, and, and what we 
bringing with the new, why we're so excited about this platform is we're bringing the ability first to get all of these four projects in one time, one, time, one runtime and one control plane, but also allow the community to run it across multiple cluster from one place, um, getting it as a solution, not just as a technology. If I may add to that, the, the value of bringing these projects together, it provides so many insights. So when you're trying to figure out, there's some breaking change that has been made, but you don't necessarily know where it is because you have a lot of microservices that are out there. You have a lot of teams working on it. With, by bringing all of these things together, we're able to look at all of the commits, all of the deployments, all of the JIRA issues, all of these components combined together. So you really get a single view where you can see everything that's going on. And this is another element where when you're trying to deploy software at scale, you're trying to deliver it faster. People are getting a little bit overwhelmed because there are so many updates and so many different services and so many teams working that they're starting to miss that visibility. So this is what we want to bring into the ecosystem is we really want them, that visibility to be super clear. And by bringing all of the Argo components, the Argo tools together, we're able to do that in a single dashboard. Yeah, so if I get this right, let me just double double click on that because it sounds like, yeah, Argo's great. It's been organically growing, a lot of different components to it. But when you start getting into pushing code into in an organization, you have, I call the old old school version control kind of vibe going on where it's like, what you don't know what's out there and, and how that affects uh, the system as it's a as distributed system, it's, which cloud is. Um, there are consequences when stuff breaks. So uh, <laughs> we all know that. Is that kind of where you guys are getting at that the challenge is actually the opportunity at the same time where it's all goodness, but then when you start looking at scale and the system impact, is that kind of where the open source and you guys pick up, is that right? This is, this is one aspect. I think the second one is that again, you know, when you look at each individual component of Argo, each provides a lot of value by itself. But when you sum it, the value of the sum is greater than the value of the individual. So when you're taking, you know, really the events and workflow, Argo CD and Algo Wallet, and you bring them all together into single runtime, the value of its sum is really automation all the way from code to cloud. It's not breaking into, you know, there is like an automation for CI, there's an automation for CD, there's automation for, you know, progressive delivery. It's actually automated all the way from the Git commit through the um, the GitOps, through the deployment strategy and so on, and being able to monitor it and scale it in the enterprise scale. So hey, of course it's helping enterprise and make Argo to some level more cautious for enterprise, if I may say, but second is really bringing all of these components together and get the outcome be greater than the individual part. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, make it make a commercial grade, if you will, for the enterprise yeah. that wants to have support and consistency exactly. and whatnot. What, what other problems are you solving, Dan? Can you chime in on the whole, um, how you guys resolve some of these challenges for the enterprise? Because again, some stability is key as well, but also the business benefit's got to be there for the development teams. Yeah, so there's, there's, there's several. Uh, one aspect is that the way that most people operate today is they essentially do a bunch of commands and engage with systems. And then hopefully at the end, they write those things to Git. Uh, and this is a little bit backwards if you think about it, because there's a situation where you can end up with things in production that were never checked in, or maybe somebody's operating and they're making a change. If you look at most of the downtime that's occurred over the last two years, it's because people have, you know, loved a key when they were when they were typing in a command or something like that. Yeah. The way that this system works is that we provide an interface, both the CLI and the GUI, where those operations interactions actually end with a Git commit. So uh, rather than doing an operation and then hopefully committing to Git, most of the operations are actually done first in Git, or if there is something that can't be done first in Git, it's maybe bootstrapped and then committed to Git as part of a single command. Yeah. So this means you have end-to-end -end traceability. It also means your auditability is way better. Uh, and then the second, the other component that we're adding is that security and scale layer. So we are securing these things. We're building in you know, single sign-on and all of those robust security things that you would expect to have across all these instances. So many organizations, when they're building their software delivery tools, they have to deploy instances in many locations. And so this is how you end up with companies that have 5,000 instances yeah. that are all out of date and insecure. Yeah. Well, with CodeFresh, if you need to deploy a component onto this, this end cluster or something like that, you maybe have thousands of them. 
All of those are monitored and taken care of in a centralized way. So I can do all of my updates at once. I can make sure they're all up to date. I'm not running with a bunch of you know, known CVEs or something like that. Uh, and it's clear. The components are also designed in an architectural way so that only the information that is needed is ever passed out. So I can have a cluster that is remotely managed that checks out code that the control plane never has access to. So this hybrid model has been really popular with our customers because we, we have customers in, in healthcare, we have customers in defense and in, in financial services, all these regulated industries. The flow of information is really critical. So this hybrid model allows you to deploy something that has the ease of a SaaS solution, but has the security of an on-prem solution. Mm -hmm while being centrally managed and easy to, and easy to take care of. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's a platform. It's what it is. It's not a tool. It's not, it's not a tool anymore. It's a platform. Exactly. I think the foundational aspect of this is critical. And, and um, uh, you mentioned automation before. If you're going to go end-to-end -end automation, you have some stuff in the system that, whether it's uh, uh, hasn't been checked in yet. I mean, we know what this leads to. Right? Disaster or a lot of troubleshooting and disruption. That's what it seems to solve. Is that, am I getting that right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it, 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 Go yeah it, it, it helps automate the whole process, but as you say, it's really like identify what needs not to be um, going all the way to production and really kind of avoid vulnerabilities or any, um, you know, flows in the software. So it, it automates everything, but in a way that, uh, the, that the, the automation can identify issues and avoid them from coming um, into the production. Well, great stuff here. I got to ask you guys now that you got that settled. It's really, I see the value there. How you guys are letting it grow organically and, and with uh, Ergo, and then building that platform for for uh, for businesses and developers. Really cool. Uh, and real, and I see the foundational value there. It just only gets better. How are you guys contributing back to open source and helping the wider GitOps and Argo communities? Because this is again the rising tide that's bringing all the boats into the harbor, so to speak. So um, this is a good trend. People will acknowledge that. So how's this going to work as you guys work back into the open source community? So uh, we we work closely with the both myself and the other maintainers work closely with with the community on the roadmap and making sure that we're addressing issues. I think if you look in the last you know quarter, we probably have. Uh, upwards of 40 or 50 different issues that we've solved in terms of fixing a bug or adding features or things like that. So making sure that these tools, which are really the undergirding you know, components of our platform, they have to be really robust. They have to be really strong. And so we're contributing those things back. And then when it comes to the scalability side, these are things that we can build into the platform. So the value should be really clear. I can deploy this, I can manage it myself. I can build tools on top of it. And if I want to start doing it at scale, maybe I want support, that's when I really am going to go to CodeFresh and, and start saying, let's get the let's get the enterprise level platform. Awesome. Um, GitOps, a lot of people like some naysayers may say, hey, you know, it's the latest fad, you know, is it here to stay? Um, we were talking about big code earlier, GitOps, obviously you're seeing, you know, open source just every year, just get better and better and growth. I mean, I remember when when uh, I was breaking into the business, <laughs> you had to sell under the table. Now it's all free and open, getting better every year. Just the growth of code. Is GitOps a fad? How do you talk to people who say that? I mean, besides slapping around saying, get, you know, wake up. I mean, how do you guys address that when people say it's just the latest fad? So, so, so if I may comment here, and you know, Dan, feel free to chime in. I think that uh, GitOps is a continuation of a trade that everything is, is a source code. You know, um, as a developer, you know, many years ago myself and still writing code, you know, we always wrote code and code was the source of, you know, truth. That's where we write our code. But now code actually is also describing how our application is running um, in production. And, and we've already seen kind of where it get next. You know, we also hear about infrastructure as a code. So now actually we're storing the code the way the infrastructure should be. And I think that the benefit of storing all this configuration in a source code, which has been built to track changes, to be enabled to roll back, that is just going to be, you know, here to stay. And, and I think that's, that's the new way of doing things. All right, gentlemen, great. Closing statements, please share uh, an update on the company, what it's all about, what, you, what event you got coming. I know you got a big launch. 
to take us through, take us home. Yeah, join us on February 1st. We're going to be launching the CodeFresh software delivery platform. Raziel and I will be hosting the event. We've got a number of customers, a number of members of the community who are going to be joining us to show off that platform. So you're going to be able to see it in action, uh, see how the features work and understand the value of it. And you'll see how it works with GitOps. You'll see how it helps you deliver software at scale. That's February 1st. You can get information at codefresh.io. Raziel Dayan, thanks for coming on. Appreciate Thank you. the showcase. Thanks for sharing. Congratulations, Thank great venture. So Love the approach. Love the growth in debt cloud native. And you guys are on the, on the cutting edge. Fresh code, people love fresh code. Codefresh.io. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is the AWS Startup Showcase, Open Cloud Innovations, Cloud Scale, Software, Data. That's the future, modern applications being developed, uh, changing the game to the next level. This is theCUBE's coverage, season two, episode one of the ongoing AWS Startup series here on theCUBE.